Okay guys, I have a vision of a perfect world. A German world. Just kidding, just kidding. I envision a world in which people can live peacefully. But of course this involves many different areas. One example might be that victims of vicious bullying are allowed to participate in class online. At least they should have the option to do so. Or maybe the bully has to be the one that is learning remotely. Everything would be better than today's situation. Those might be some potential ideas to start eliminating bullying and violence in school. I think violence and aggression is generally bad. If I was able to genetically modify humans, I would go for golden retriever instead of pit bull configuration if you can follow this analogy. However, there are of course good evolutionary reasons why we are capable of anger, aggression, and violence. For example, imagine some scumbag committing a horrible crime against a child. This triggers a wild range of responses. The first group are raging guys that suggest to torture the criminal and kill him. Therefore, they become killers themselves. The second group is against torture and death penalty and is therefore seen as weak. Since both sides are not ideal in the society I envision, I would like to talk about this subject. I think I will deactivate the comments for this video. I know that almost nobody will agree with me and I don't feel like responding to one-liners. I explain to you why later. There are two statements that I want to prove to you. First, emotions, especially anger, are almost always weakness. Secondly, you aren't as good of a person as you think you are. All right. Imagine you are sitting in a business meeting. Some Karen is talking down on you, belittling you in front of the others. Most guys get angry and start an argument. In their mind they have to defend themselves to show the group that they are competent. However, this isn't ideal. The right thing to do is to stay completely calm. Don't interfere. Don't get angry. Don't show any emotions. I will guarantee you that after the meeting the whole group will come up to you and tell you what an a-hole Karen is. Because they notice it too. Out. 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 I don't want these kids on camera. I don't want these kids on camera. I don't this, want the kids on camera. Look at this, guys. You can you believe that this man just put his hands on me? I want your. Supervisor. I didn't put my hands on you. You didn't put your hands on me. I didn't put hands on you. I, I need your supervisor. Call your supervisor. Go out that way. Go out that way. Go out that way. Go out that way. Your supervisor. Go out that way. Call your I'll call him. Go out that way. I'm gonna wait right here to your supervisor. No, you're gonna go that way. I'm not gonna listen to you. Go out into the lobby. Zero authority. Go out into the zero lobby. Zero authority. Go out into the lobby. Zero authority, Gok. <clears throat> Making a mock of the law. Devin, he's gotta go. He's gotta go. I gotta get these kids out of your supervisor. A Karen doesn't know that she is in the wrong, but the average person does. We can see this every day on TikTok. Karen's confidence has no limit, but don't get fooled by it. If you get angry, Karen suddenly has a point. Now you are on her level. Now you lose sympathy. Of course there are limits to this. It won't end mobbing of course. It's really just for normies encountering a wild Karen. Now, let's move on to today's topic. You are reading an article online. Some guy has abused a child. What an awesome opportunity for you to show how good of a person you are. You instantly go into the comments section and write a comment like we should torture this guy to death. Everyone applauds you. You such a righteous man. You really care about children. That's the reality on TikTok and most other social media platforms. But in my opinion, it's a low IQ solution. Imagine there are two types of societies. The first cuts of the hands of a thief. 
tortures a scammer, kills a murderer with an axe. The second says to a criminal look you are not able to live with other people. You have to live in a cage for the rest of your life. The first society is just low IQ animal behavior caused by rage. The second is emotionless, systematic and just superior in my opinion. If your daughter ever asks you what a prison is you can just tell her that that's a building where bad people have to go. If you tell her that you are cutting hands off from thieves she will be totally freaked out. Now you might say that torture prevents people from doing crime. But that's not the case since Mexican gangs are the cruelest people on earth and crime is flourishing. I think prisons are a good solution. We can feel morally superior for not being barbaric and simultaneously eliminating criminals from society. Maybe the other prisoners will even eliminate the child abuser for us. I do agree that many sentences are way too short. In my opinion a good society needs a justice system and a police force that is almost robotic. No crying and arguing. No angry officers. Just calm efficient people that are doing their jobs like surgeons. Because if we go down to the level of barbaric criminals, the society seems underdeveloped. And also, it's not like barbaric societies get respected more. Chinese or Japanese societies are known for their self-control and they can be brutally efficient in reclaiming power if they have to. In summary, a superior system is cold, uniform, methodical, and morally superior. A shitty system is based on emotions, in a downward spiral of violence and corrupt.